Hello there, I have returned from Andorra and today I will be talking about my experience and my time in Andorra as well as talking about the entire event and my game against Harmless. There will be spoilers in this video so if you haven't watched the event yet and do not want to know the outcome please get back to this video once you find out. Before we jump straight into it, I want to say a big thank you to all the organisers of the eSports Festival in Andorra for making this entirely possible. And of course, the GeoGuessr team and developers giving myself and the others a once in a lifetime opportunity to visit a new country, a beautiful country, and also compete in such an amazing LAN tournament for GeoGuessr and also providing us with the flights and the accommodation. It was an absolute privilege to get the opportunity to explore some beautiful areas in Andorra, including the ski resort, and it was such a perfect day. I may have become the sunburnt merchant after that day. <laughs> feel absolutely spoiled by how amazing the entire experience was, and yeah, I'd love to visit the Pyrenees area again sometime in the future. So, how did I find Andorra? Well... Of course, it was amazing to visit Andorra for the very first time. And it has to be, for me, up there with one of the most beautiful countries I've ever visited. Also, it was great to catch up with some legends that were in Stockholm last year. Radu, Lenly, Bastel and Harmless. And also, it was great to meet Malfunction, Rix and Sifuko for the first time in person too. But all of them, really strong players. And it's great to get to know more people as more of these tournaments happen. Also, a big shout out to everyone who travelled to watch us and support us. And some also played in the Qualys event the day before. I think Toro, Vey, Sifuko, who won the whole thing. I think Biquette as well. Like, shout out to everybody who made the travels themselves as well, just to try and get in and also watch the event. I arrived in the country quite late due to flight delays, like me and Rowan were waiting at Manchester Airport for quite a bit until the flight, until we eventually set off on the flight to Barcelona. And then we had to get a late, well, I had to get a late coach as well with Rowan. And it was like a three hour coach journey to go to Andorra. So the coach journey was the real killer. <laughs> it was um, a tough one, but amazing sunset in Barcelona. Really enjoyed traveling through there. And then once it got to Andorra in the evening, it was pretty much pitch black so had to wait for the morning until I could see the Andorra mountains once um, I arrived in my hotel the my, my bedroom was huge like I've never seen a hotel room so big in my life there was literally like a like a settee like a sofa that was that could fit five people on it it was wild a separate like thing so you could either choose you can have a choice of having a bath or a shower and also it was just massive it was like two or three times the size of my room I'm in right now so it was absolutely massive and really got settled in it very quickly as you would expect but it felt so strange to have so much room I don't even think the people there who went to Stockholm have had a room that big before as well but yeah for the following morning we had a very nice breakfast and straight away myself Lenley and Bastel had a great opportunity to go to a few tourist spots um, with some of the Andorra locals who are organising it with the, the GeoGuessr team. We took part in some media shots as well uh, during that trip. And yeah, it was beautiful. I was, I'm was i sharing some pictures on the screen now because, yep, I did forget to bring my GoPro <laughs> to uh, for it, which was kind of annoying at the time, but I still managed to take some photos. And also it was just good to embrace like the experience just like take everything in from my eyes because i always want to remember the moment and sometimes you get a bit too carried away with recording coverage that you don't actually really appreciate the landscape and you know you're here you're in andorra you're on top of like you're like 2500 meters above sea level clear blue skies you got lamages flying over you like you can't really beat that so yeah it was absolutely beautiful and yeah took some nice pictures and it was great uh, chatting to some locals, chatting, catching up with Lenley and Bastel as well whilst the and that's when the sunburn happened once I arrived back <laughs> from that trip. Unlucky Bezo. It was a really good memory. I would love to go there again, especially to go up that trail to run up it. I really want to get back into running at some point and you know it'd be good to combine that kind of 
outdoors, the geo gets a kind of theme with my running because like I say, I used to be a proper runner back in the day. I did I did a marathon and yeah, it'd be good to get that back in. Um, it'd be good for visiting new countries and doing some runs too because I would love to run in the Pyrenees. Of course, a lot of people will probably be wondering, did we see Andorra Brick? Yes, we did. Not in the actual main urban area, but as you left the most urban areas, you saw a lot of the Andorra Brick on the buildings. It's actually beautiful how amazing the architecture is. A lot better than the UK, of course. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't take much to beat the UK. But we did see some Andorra Brick, and I think Lenley did actually take some Andorra Brick to the airport of Mice to uh, fly with it, so that was good to see. And yeah, also like it was great chatting to locals. Um, everybody was really nice, and I really felt welcome in in Andorra as well. So it was a really nice trip. And outside of the GeoGuessr side, and you know the actual LAN event itself, it was it really felt like a very nice short holiday. With you know, especially going to these remote places and getting these amazing views. Yeah. It's something I will never forget, and hopefully we'll see more of this from GeoGuessr because I think like visiting these beautiful countries and doing these events is really awesome, and it will definitely motivate more people to put the put the grind in for sure. But yep, on the tourney day itself, um, we had the bracket confirmed. Like, well, we had the bracket confirmed the last night, but it was official until it went live. But once I found out it was against Hamas, I was like, yes, this is going to be quite a tough game, Hamas. Might have been the second or third favourite on paper, maybe. But like I say, Harmus has a very, been a very long-term strong player, like one of the best players for many years. To be up against him straight away, I was up for the challenge. And it kind of made me feel happy that I put all the grinding in Russia and, you know, put some time for moving and put in, you know, so... And also just no move in general, because Harmus is a very strong no move player. And my no move was the mode I got significantly stronger with in the last two or three months. So, yeah, I was really excited. And eventually, we did play against each other. And if you remember, we had the first round incident. <laughs> the pressure kind of happened where I was a bit nervous and I saw something that said Scotia Bank and I kind of panicked. But in terms of like after that, I feel like I kept it together, I kept locked in, I managed to win that game, which was a real good statement to make. Yes, it was not the best first game performance, I would agree to myself, I would definitely agree with that. It was good, the mental side, to be still locked in, because in these events, it's so different to when you're casually playing behind your computer at home, it's so different, and for me to like adapt very quickly, to it and just improve as I went on in the event was in the match was much very nice yeah like the, then the no move happened and I felt like I was playing really well in that second no move game uh, there was one round like I think it was a talent round that I should have got a good region guessing like I should have remember I should have not muddled up uh, the car meta stuff that's like one of the most distinctive car metas for talent region guessing if you know it's the peninsula uh, which Hammers did guess and if I didn't muddle it up um, I would have definitely won that game because it was a very close end with a good Panama guess by Harmless but like I say you have to take the most out of your opportunities and I think Harmless was better with that on the day so um, credit Harmless also Harmless is a very a very good friend of mine he's very chill and I also looked up to him because like he's been here for such a long time in the community he's such a strong and talented player and just a nice guy like really nice very chill and to play against him was real really fun and we both laughed at it about the end because it was some chaotic, chaotic moments in terms of like tough rounds. And maybe there was a few rounds that we both know we should have done better on. But that's what's going to happen in land events sometimes. You're not going to be perfect. You're going to make mistakes. You know, that's why it's good to continue to build that land experience, which I did not have at all. So I think the fact that I got two wins, I won both my moving and I was very close to one of the NMPZ games. The second NMPZ game, I think Harmer's definitely deserved it with a very nice talent guess, which I could have got, but with the time element and he was definitely more committing there, which you got to give a lot of credit for him for that. And then the NMPZ game, I feel like the multis kind of were, were unfortunate for me uh, because like I had a Peru round that was there that I got the complete right side of the country Palmas didn't and then there was a Sweden round where if I went a bit more west the game would have been over like it was real low and then the Croatia round happened where I made 
I would say, my first significant mistake of the entire thing. But it wasn't an easy round. But I think for hedging purposes, it wasn't a good decision at the end of it. And like I say, I'm happy to talk about uh, the round analysis in a separate video. So if you want me to do that, definitely drop a like button in the video because I would love to um, just, just, just talk about round to round and especially talk about the key fundamental rounds. And I feel like there were some rounds, like I was listening to some like streams afterwards. And I think a lot of people did not understand my thought process at some times. And I feel like it'd be good to address that because it was kind of tough to listen to at some, <laughs> at some point, you know, where, when like, when I was thinking Voronezh, like, like, for example, that I feel like, I still feel like that is very valid. And um, I did move away from it because I realized it was 22, but I'll talk about it in a separate video. I just want to get that out there because I think a lot of people did not really think much about my thought process um in some of the rounds and you know thought i was kind of clueless which i wasn't um so in more scenarios obviously the npz game happened and i, I lost three two and you know it i still feel like winning two games and losing by very fine margin is still good like i gave it a good game i think on the geogaster stream i was really voted against like everyone was strongly favoring calmless which of course, is to be expected. Like Harmus has been to a LAN event before. He's participated in a LAN event before. He's very well. Mu he's. Mu I feel like he's much more known as a pro player community than me, a hundred percent. And also, people haven't really seen much of me. I don't really know how much of the grinding I did manage to get through. So it was very understandable uh, that I was void the underdog. But like I say, I feel like I showed a lot of potential there, and showed that I could have won that game if little t slight things ended up being different and either way it was a really entertaining game it was a good advertisement for geoguessr we had crazy we had crazy rounds like i would never know how i would never know how that round was in rio grande de north that was absolutely outrageous that was so crazy to me and then obviously we had the piskov incident which i'll talk about if you want me to do the analysis because uh, there was a good reason why i didn't go far east or east russia there i did think about that but i knew it couldn't have been there but i'll talk about that in a separate video after after i got knocked out it, it eventually led to the final between radu and lenley and i feel like the final was justified i think lenley played extremely well especially in the semi final and the start of the final and yeah credit to both the lads and at the end of it radu took the victory which i feel like was deserved at the end and you know it's good to see that radu's got is going to going to be the world cup again but yeah i really do want radu to do well I, I wish him the best of luck and congratulations to him and also he's a good friend of mine too so i've got a lot of respect for him and he's one of the main people who motivated me to take the competitive scene more seriously and try a lot harder with the grinding before i talk about what happened after the harmless game in terms of the mental side i want to say a massive thank you to everyone who helped me you know before the events so like during the training weeks whether they were one-to-ones whether it was sharing tips or whether it was just practicing duels with you or just getting feedback about anything whether it is to how to get better at something what i should work on more and also just the company as well so like the company the advice and um, the mental advice and stuff was probably i'd be the more important thing because i feel like i can definitely perform at a very high level but it's dealing with the occasion dealing with the pressure dealing when a round goes wrong like how do you keep yourself mentally in check and i just want to say a big thank you to everybody who helped me along the way there is way too many people to name and I don't want to like miss someone by accident. You guys know who you are who helped me out and I want to say a massive thank you to you all for sparing your time to help me. Whether regardless of what it was, everything helped um, at the end of this and I still feel like my debut, although I did get knocked out in the first round, I still feel like it was there was some positive signs and I think I surprised a lot of people, which was nice too. But yeah, talking about like my reaction after the Harmus game, it was kind of a strange feeling. I mean, we both like we were laughing, it, laughing about it at the end because I feel like both of us felt like we could have definitely done better in some moments. And, you know, I would say it wasn't really a consistent performance. Like, there was definitely something in each game that could have definitely been a lot better, I felt like. And, you know, that's going to happen, especially for me. It's my first one. It's something I'm not used to. And like I say, I still feel like I've got a lot more to improve at GeoGuessr, like yes, I can perform. I've shown that I've got the ability now on the stage, which is nice. 
but I know I can do a lot better. And in the training that I've been doing, like the moving games, I was playing much better than moving games. I need to make sure my moving is better uh, next time. But I think like the moving games were tricky for two reasons. First of all, they were the early games. So that's probably when I was most nervous. And I feel like the nerves can definitely get to you more in the moving games than the other modes. And also the fact like I had this uncertainty thing. I probably should have put my hand up and just asked um, the referee during at the end of the first game about can I actually turn an animations off? Because before I sat down, I asked, do, do I do I have to keep animations on? And I was told yes. From what I remember, maybe it was yes, but if you take it off, you won't get the notification. I probably just was absolutely breaking it. I didn't fully listen. So pretty much what happened was, as I normally with moving, I play with holding the enter key whilst moving forward to move fast. And then that's because I could put a marker on the map after I pan around and moved. So I, at the start, I, I couldn't move properly because the enter thing wasn't working because chat and animations were on. So that was the unfortunate thing. And eventually I had I decided I, I just had to use the space bar but when I use the space bar I can't put my marker down anywhere because it will submit a guess so it was quite an awkward thing I wasn't used to it and that was probably another reason why I was a bit not as with it compared to what I was doing training like if you guys saw what I was doing in training you understand where I'm coming from but if you don't then maybe this is this is just maybe over overthinking it but honestly like those are true practice with me you guys know that I've definitely played better in moving. But I did get the wins in the moving though, which is still good. I still had those opportunities and took them. And yes, like I said, that rush around, I'll also talk about that's another round where I feel like a lot of people really misinterpreted what my thought process was and thought I was just being a headless chicken, chicken which was just not true at all, uh, to be honest. So I do need to talk about that. And this is why I like, you know, I should do this, anal this analysis video so yeah if there's if, if there's if you guys want to see it just let me know but like i say there is plenty of reasons there's there is always a reason every round like i don't feel like i was totally clueless on any of the rounds besides that one rush around in piskov i think and then there was the real grand north round that just caught me by surprise like other rounds i don't feel like i was clueless at all i had some idea of what it could be and where it can be it's just the decision making from that so again i'm just making that clear just so people don't jump the gun on a few things. Getting back to the point I was making, so after like we left the stage at first, I, I was kind of a bit disappointed because I really felt like I should have gone through. Like that Sweden round, I should have got it to have with just plunking on a road that lined up or just using the hills on NPZ and just go more west because where I was wasn't really that hilly. And if I did, I would have won the game. That was very fine margins. Same with the Panama round, I could have hedged it a little bit better. I should have considered more about that pocket because it was still 5.5 times and it was only a thousand points. The orange and the green bar really misled me a little bit because I thought, oh, he's a bit, he's more, he's significantly further down than me, but that wasn't really the case. Like only, only 250, 300 health and the, and the game swings. So I should have really have been more careful though, I think. Although I felt my head was still valid, but you know, like I still, I think I still should have tried a bit more there with trying to get the best hedge or trying to go where I think is most likely as well. But I think none of that would have happened without that talent round if I didn't mess that round up. But very fine margins, like I say. Um, so yeah, at first I didn't feel like, I, at first when I actually left the stage, I felt like I didn't perform well enough. I felt like there was too many rounds, there was too many occasions where there was bad guesses. There was, I feel like I wasn't consistent enough. But this is all comparing to what I was doing in training. And training and LAN events don't really correlate. Training definitely helps you prepare, but it doesn't mean you're going to do the exact same things you're going to be doing in training that you're going to do in the event itself. So from that perspective, I felt, you know, that I definitely feel like I didn't perform well enough. Um, but at least it was a good game. It was a close game and it was an entertaining game. But like I said, I know, I know my work. I know, I know how much I've been grinding. I know like how much I've improved. And at the time I was just like, yeah, I don't feel like I left a good, a, a positive impression that I felt like it was just a chaos game and harmless just got the end, just, just had, had his moment in that, um, in a PZ round. And that's, that's it, you know. There was like one, there was like probably one or two games where I felt like I played well, 
uh, like consistently well. The rest, I feel like I played had some good moments. I'd have played well in some certain moments, but in general, at that given moment, I was a bit disappointed how it ended. Let's just say that. Like, it was really nice though that uh, Mika uh, was one of the people who first talked to me and said like it was really good. You played really well. It was very close, and you're definitely up there. And he said like quite a few very positive things, which made me feel a bit better. And then also Lenley was, I think, the first person to come to me who was a who was like a regular Geo Getter player and, and just one of the wildcard participants who actually came to me and he was like said that you played really well and it was just really close and you know, you definitely showed how much you know how much of the grinding you've been doing and you know, you've got you're definitely up there now and you just gotta keep going, you've got so much potential. And quite a few people said that. I remember Kratzo saying or Kratzo I always don't know what to call call you, sorry. <laughs> but um, he was also like, I feel like he's a very honest person. I also had a very similar thing, conversation with him around the evening. And it's quite it's quite nice. It really cheered me up because I felt like, I felt like I did it. I feel like I should have done better. Um, but it was nice to get those compliments. And also all of the, the Discord messages, like, you guys know who you are. That was really nice. You really all changed your mood. Like, yes. I wasn't going to be beating up about it. I just knew from like a neutral perspective for myself that I could have done better in some of those rounds that really would have made a difference. But regardless, I still feel like I played well enough. And also, I didn't really watch back. It was just in the moment, I didn't feel like I played well enough. But when I actually watched back, I was like, yeah, I did actually do all right. I did actually play well and I had some good moments. And uh, like looking at like certain rounds like the normal move, I was, you know, in control in, in a lot of it and that was really nice to see because in the moment it feels very different than than you guys watching it for example so it was really nice to give you know watch back on the stream and then realize that i didn't do actually that bad i felt like i did quite well and for a land debut against such a strong opponent i should definitely be positive and i am and um, yeah i just now more motivated to try harder and I just know that the level of Geo guess is just going to get up and up and up. And I don't want to be sitting back too much and laying back and saying, yeah, I'm there now because I still need to keep grinding. I still need to put the work in. And I still want to achieve my goal of getting into that regionals um, next year. And hopefully with that, getting to the World Cup. Because I feel like I've definitely got the ability. I've definitely got the potential for it. And I definitely believe that I can if I put the hard work in. So hopefully... I'll have a time like I have, um, you know, have had in recent months, but I know I'm going to get busy at some point. But yeah, like in hindsight, in the, the day, I felt like I did show enough to you guys, um, a good enough performance, and it was, and I felt like I showed good glimpses of the level that I can play at. So it was nice to watch back, and thank you so much for all the nice messages because it really changed my mood. Because when it's that close and you lose by these five margins in the certain rounds. You definitely, I definitely should have capitalised on more. It does hurt a little bit. But yeah, so what is next? So the plan for me now is to take it easy for this week uh, in terms of the grinding. But I will be deciding on what I want to study and grind for the next month or so. I've already got ideas and I don't think I'm going to jump into a massive country straight away. I'll probably be doing something large or medium, like something like Norway or something like that maybe, where... It's a country maybe that doesn't get appreciated enough and I just spend time on it and um, learn some roads and get better at region guessing in that country. And there's a few other things like I will be taking all more into account. I'm going to try the new league season and try to improve my moving and my pinpointing skills and my scanning and all that. Because in the event I didn't like scanning too long because I feel like if I did scan, especially moving, like, you know, landscape scanning, I mean, that it gives my opponents to find information and also um, also then they can line it up better than me. So that's why I tried to send quick when I knew roughly where it was. But um, yeah, I do believe that, like I said before, I have much more potential to show. I still feel like I'm in my early stages of this professional geoguesser thing. And I know how good I can be. Uh, when I play well and also I know there's a lot of things that I can do better and I know what I need to work on so yep hopefully I you know next year I get into one of these on events again and hopefully get into the World Cup because I do feel that I have the ability to do that and I just need to keep up the, the hard work and effort 
and also getting this experience of LAN events because it was my first ever one was really good. So yeah, we'll see what happens. And yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. So I hope you enjoyed this like chat, this chat video, just reacting about the event whilst I was, you know, the event itself, what me being in Andorra and all that, all the kafaf. Like I said before, if you want me to do a an analysis of my game against Harmus, feel free to let me know by dropping a like. I'm more than happy to make the video. And yeah, definitely keep an eye on, the, on my channel. I will be posting videos and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah, of course.